Hi there, welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Hegarty here. This is the third video on call one sequences and series, and in this video we're going to talk about recurrence relations. Now, before I go into examples, I want to introduce the, the big idea here. I already showed you this in video one, but I'm going to recap it for you so we're fully aware of recurrence relations. Suppose I had a sequence defined by, let's say, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19, etc. Okay, now one way of describing that sequence is to give the nth term, un. Now, what's the nth term of this sequence? Well, you should know how to work it out from GCSE, but everything's going up in threes. So above it, we would write the three times table 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. And the nth term of the three times tables is 3n. How do you get from the three times tables to the one we've got? Well, you'd have to, to each term, you'd have to add 4. So the nth term would be 3n add 4. So in this case, un is equal to 3n add 4. Now that's called uh, the nth term. That's one way of describing the sequence. But you could also describe the sequence in a totally different way. You could describe the sequence by saying, uh, how does it work? Well, say this term here is just the term before add 3. So you could say the, the current term equals the term before plus 3. It's like saying add 3 each time. So for example, 19, this term here, is the term before add 3. And there's a way of maybe describing this. You could say, um, you could say for example, the um, n plus 1th term, the next, say this one, it, it, you, were, you were calling that the n plus 1th term, you could say it's the nth term, the one before, if that's your n, just say that was n plus 1, it's the one before, which would be obviously un, in the same way, you know, that's u2 and that's u1, it's the one before, uh, plus 3. And you would have to be told the first term, u1 is equal to 7. That would be enough information to explain the sequence. You start at 7 and you're adding 3 to the term before each time. So that's how you might describe the sequence. And this here is called a recurrence relation. And we're going to do some questions on using that. It's a different way of describing a sequence. So let's have a go at a few examples. We are asked to find the first four terms of the following sequence. We are told that un plus 1, the, the next term, is the one before it, the un, the one just before it, add 4. And we're told the first term is 7. So we would start off by saying u1 is equal to 7. We would then work out u2. u2 is equal to u1, the one before it, add 4. So u2 would be equal to 7 add 4, u2 would equal 11. So we've got the first term and the second term. Let's now work out u3. u3, the third term, must be the one before it, u2, add 4. But we know u2 is 11 from this one, so u3 must be equal to 11 add 4, and u3 must be equal to 15. And we're just asked to work out the fourth term as well. So we would use this and say the fourth term is the third term plus 4. So u4 is equal to u3 add 4. u4 is equal to 15 add 4. u4 is equal to 19. And it's very important you lay your working out like this, very systematically showing all your methods and working marks. But there we go, that's the first four terms of this sequence. Let's have a go at a very similar one. Here we're asked to work out the first four terms of this sequence. So we have that u1 is equal to 5. And we're told the next term is the one before add 4. So u2 must be the u1 add 4. u2 must be equal to u1, which is 5 add 4. u2 must be equal to 9. And then we're going to say that u3 must be equal to the one before add 4. So u2 add 4. u3 is equal to 9 add 4. u3 is equal to 13. 
And lastly, we're going to say u4 is equal to u3 add 4, u4 is equal to 13 add 4, so u4 is equal to 17, and we are done. And here are the terms of the sequence, the first four terms, there's u1, that's the answer for u2, that's the answer for u3, that's the answer for u4. And have a go at another one. Now this one is slightly more tricky. Um, it's asked the first four terms. It says the it says the term in the sequence is three times the one immediately before it take away the one two before it. Okay? And in this case they've given us two starting points. They've told us the first term and the second term. We need two terms to get the next term. So, we have u1 is equal to 4. We have u2 is equal to 2. Now, let's think about this. u3, okay, this is 3 times the 1 just before it. So, 3 times u2, take away the 1, 2 before it. So, take away u1. So, u3 is equal to 3 times u2, which is 2. Take away 4. u3 must be 6 take away 4, which is 2. Now let's try and work out u4. Let's think about this. u4, we're going to put n is 2 in here. If you think about u4, is 3 times the 1 just before it. So 3 times u3 take away u2. So u4 is equal to 3 times 2 take away u2, which is 2. And u4 would therefore be equal to 4. And we have our first four terms. U1 is 4. U2 is 2. U3 is 2. And U4 is also equal to 4. And we are done in that case. And we have uh, done the easy scenarios. Now the next one we need to do, this is a quite a complex problem. So we're going to work through this. And this would summarize our recurrence relations are probably around as hard as they should come up for us. So, we are given there is a sequence of terms and it's defined by the following recurrence relation. Un plus 2 is m times the 1 just before it plus the 1 2 before it. And we are given that u2, u1 is 2 and u2 is equal to 5. Now, this m is unknown to us. It's just acting like a number. It's an unknown. So, part A. Find an expression in terms of m, so leaving m in it for u3. So, for part A. We know that u1 is equal to 2. We also know that u2 is equal to 5. And we can use the recurrence formula here. u3 is m times the 1 just before it, so m times u2 plus the 1, 2 before it, u1. So u3 is equal to m times u2, u2 is 5, so m times 5 we write as 5m plus u1, which is 2. And there we go, that there is our expression for u3 in terms of m. Okay? Now let's do part b. It says find an expression in terms of m for u4. Well, u4 is equal to m times the 1 just before it, so m times u3 plus the 1, 2 before it, which must in this case be u2. So u4 is equal to m. Keep that there. Now u3, we've worked that out. It's 5m add 2 plus u2, and u2 is 5, so plus 5. So u4, I could expand this bracket out like so. It would be 5m squared plus 2m plus 5. And that is an expression in terms of m for u4. It's got m squared, m, and 5. Now, there is a next part to it. It says, given that u4 actually has the value 21, find the possible values of m. We have an expression for u4 here. And we are told it's equal to 21. So for part C, we're going to solve 5m squared add 2m add 5 is equal to 21. 
it's a quadratic so I'm going to take 21 off both sides 5m squared add 2m subtract and that's going to be 16 is equal to 0 and now we're going to try and factorize this if possible should be a 5m there and an m there equals 0 and can we think of a of a way to factorize this um, so we're going to have plus 2 I think and negative 8 should work because uh, 5m multiplied by m is 5m squared uh, 8 multiplied by, uh, negative 8 multiplied by 2 is negative 16 5m times m is uh, 5m times 2 is 10m negative 8 times m is negative 8m so that would give me positive 2m right so therefore m on the one hand is 8 over 5 and m on the other hand is equal to negative 2 and it asked us for two possible values and we have found the possible values there and we are done in this case so that's all for this video i hope you found that useful thank you very much for watching